Hi everyone, Patricia Warby, Alchemy Therapies here, and just a little update with what's going on in the UK right now. We are finally entering a new phase where we're emboldened, I think, to um, prevent more infection by knowing who has had the infection and who hasn't, and we're doing a lot more testing. And a new website has been launched in order for key workers to access tests, which they book online. Now this sounds all well and good in theory. In fact, it's part of the exit strategy for the UK. But what we are finding is that demand far outstrips supply as ever. This has been a recurring theme in the UK, particularly with um, personal protective equipment as well, or PPE. So generally speaking, uh, we are moving in the right direction. Figures are going down, cases and deaths seem to be stabilizing as well, and deaths do lag behind cases. So um, we are definitely getting there and lockdown is working. But there are some cracks beginning to show, I think, in the policy of just um, trusting a very select group of scientists who we don't know who they are, actually. We have a committee, but we don't know who the members are. And we've learned recently that a government advisor who is not scientific is on the committee and we're not sure what his role is, Dominic Cummings. So, I mean, this isn't a, a political video and I'm, I'm not going to get into that but there are definitely some issues and some of the issues I'd like to highlight seem to be around accessing personal protective equipment which um, it, it turns out that a lot of these uh, the gowns and the masks and um, headgear are designed for large men now this happens a lot in science and in particularly in medicine where things are uh, usually standardized to a certain dose or a certain size which tends to be set by and large by a larger male body and what a lot of healthcare workers are finding out in in the UK at least and I'm sure it's the same everywhere um, is that they don't fit properly and so there are gaps where there shouldn't be and thus they are more at risk. Now in the UK, 75% of NHS National Health Service workers are female. And yet our current standard is set to the male. And I ask again, is this fair? Is it relevant? Um, and does it need to be looked at really? Do we need different sizes of um, protective equipment? I think we do. And the other thing uh, perhaps to just highlight is the, the current news that's come out today is that having the virus and having antibodies to the virus doesn't necessarily make you immune to new infection. And that's come from the World Health Organization, the WHO. Now, I find that a very strange piece of information to be released right now, because aren't we on the absolute hunt for a vaccine which relies on the fact that we provoke antibodies in the body and therefore promote immunity. So those two things just don't fit. And I wonder, I mean, obviously the WHO is supposed to be the experts, but um, whether that information is incomplete or it's just that we simply don't have the evidence therefore. But it's very interesting how the media report that and say things like no evidence for, which means in the public view, oh, it doesn't give me immunity. Um, just because there's no evidence for something doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Uh, the same could be said of uh, the use of vitamin C and the use of vitamin D, uh, which have been used in France and in China to help people who are in the second stage of the disease when they're in the infectious stage where it's gone into the lungs and there is a, a very strong immune response, which is what's killing people and causing you know very severe disease is the overreaction of their immune system or their adaptive immune system and vitamin c and vitamin d have been shown in studies to help prevent that stage but you will hear in the media there is no evidence and i wonder is this part of you know the usual thing where uh, if it isn't acceptable to current science then they simply don't report it uh, there's certainly not as much money in nutritional approaches and I'm not saying nutrition can prevent death um, or prevent infection, but it can certainly do a lot to help, uh, you know, the incidence in terms of the secondary infection. So um, 
it can help is what I'm saying, but we're not being told that. And in fact, any suggestion that you can do something to help yourself is being shut down, <clears throat> which is a real shame because we need, we need to take responsibility as individuals as well as collectively to help deal with the fear and the paranoia around the virus. You know, people are dying out there, but they're dying usually because they've been overexposed as in healthcare workers and underprotected. And that is being brushed under the carpet every time we um, just take the government line, in fact. So I'm just asking you to be critical. Uh, in other words, use your brain, use critical thinking. Is this necessarily true? And what do we as a society want to do about that? And I think having a discussion and knowing who is making these decisions on our behalf, because the government are supposedly, uh, you know, beholden to us, we voted them in. Uh, but to have people on the committee who we don't know who they are and we don't know why they're there, I think is a real threat to democracy. So there are political issues around this, certainly, but I think the major problem for me is that the people who should be being protected majorly are still in this country not being protected as much as they should be. And that has to be changed. Anyway, good luck to you. Keep well, keep safe. Speak soon. Bye for now.